We all know that Albert Einstein changed the world, but did you know that he was offered a presidency? Everyone knows that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves, but did you know that he's a member of the WWE Hall of Fame? Did you know that the Taj Mahal was once disguised as a pile of bamboo? While researching today's list, we discovered that history is often stranger than fiction, and usually weirder and creepier too. In India's case, workers disguised the grandiose tomb as a bamboo stockpile during the Second World War so that the enemy wouldn't realize what it was. And it actually worked. Some of the facts in today's list might be a bit harder to believe. Whether it's strange solutions or surprising beliefs, these glimpses of the past provide unique insights into the lives of those who have come before us. You'll certainly never look at today's mouthwash the same way again. I'm Mike with List25, and here are 25 weird historical events that sound fake. 25. Andrew Jackson's Swearing Parrot Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the United States of America, was a fantastic war general and statesman. He served in both houses of the U.S. Congress and also happened to be a lawyer, a proper overachiever. What many may not know is that he swore like a sailor and that his propensity for swearing rubbed off on his parrot. In fact, his parrot swore so much during the president's funeral in 1845 that he had to be removed from the house. According to accounts of the time, the parrot got agitated by the crowds attending the funeral and started yelling obscenities while surrounded by mourners. He upset the mourners so much that he had to be escorted out of the house. 24. The Catholic Church believed that cats carry the soul of the devil. Do you have an evil cat? If he's just scratched your couch again, you might think so. However, in 1233, Pope Gregory IX was 100% certain that black cats carried the devil's soul. The obsidian felines have been misunderstood ever since, so much so that they've even been proven unpopular for animal shelter adoptions, taking weeks longer to be adopted than other cats. But what was the Pope's reasoning in 1233? Many believe it probably came from the opposing belief that black cats were good luck. The ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Celts all equated cats with their gods and goddesses, which did not sit comfortably with the Catholic Church. As such, black cats and other elements of pagan tradition were systematically rejected. 23. Mary Shelley kept her husband's heart after his death. In life, but more specifically love, there's till death do us part. And then there's till death do us part. When the poet Percy Bysshe Shelley died in 1822, his wife, Mary Shelley, yes, the author of Frankenstein, kept an unusual keepsake to remember him by. His remains were cremated, but strangely enough, his heart remained intact, possibly due to calcification after a tuberculosis infection. His heart was given to his widow, who kept it with her for the rest of her life. Upon her death, their son discovered the heart wrapped in one of his father's poems. The heart was later moved to the family vault, where it remains to this day. Gives a whole new meaning to I heart you. <laughs> 22. The Romans clean their teeth with urine. See, I told you you'd never look at modern mouthwash the same way again, but I am very, very sorry to have to do this to you. But did you know that urine decomposes into ammonia when it's left out for too long? While the ancient Romans figured it out and started using both human and animal urine as a mouthwash to whiten their teeth. In fact, they considered urine to be so valuable that it would be collected from their public urinals by tradesmen. And it even got taxed when it was sold. 21. The great ruler who had his wife's lover's head placed in a jar. If you're going to cheat, first of all, don't. But secondly, never marry someone with the great behind their name. When Peter the Great uncovered his wife Catherine's infidelity with William Mons, he had him executed. <laughs> it's a bit harsh, yes, but the story gets worse. He also asked that William's head be preserved with alcohol in a jar, and the jar to stay in Catherine's bedroom to remind her of her affair at all times. Luckily, Peter was not big on hypocrisy, and had the same done to his own lover's head. Mary Hamilton faced the death penalty for her offenses that included, amongst others, infanticide and theft, and her head ended up preserved in the same way. 20. Mary had a little lamb. She really did. Mary was a real person and had an actual little lamb. Mary's surname was Sawyer. The famous young girl was born in 1806 and took her little lamb to school with her one sunny day around 1816. 
When Mary got to school, she covered the little lamb in a blanket and put it at her feet, where it ended up making a noise, alerting her teacher to his presence. When Jaw Rollstone visited the town and spotted Mary sneaking the animal into school, he wrote a poem about it and gave it to Mary. 19. The world almost had a President Einstein. We all know that Albert Einstein changed the world. He gave us the theory of relativity, taught us about the expanding universe, and also, unfortunately, taught us about atomic theory. But did you know that he was offered a presidency? In 1952, when Israel's president Chaim Weizmann passed away, the Israeli ambassador Abba Eban offered the position to Einstein. The fine print included Einstein's relocation to Israel, but he would have been free to continue his research. Einstein declined, saying that he was unqualified for office as he didn't have enough experience when it came to dealing with people. Go figure. 18. One double agent was awarded by both the Nazis and the British Empire for outstanding service. James Bond, eat your heart out. A Spanish man by the name of Joan Pujol Garcia worked as a spy for both the British and the Nazis. He initially offered his services to the American and British forces, but was turned down. Not one to give up easily, he then decided to come up with a fake persona and got in touch with the Nazis, who promptly employed him. A short time later, he became a double agent for the Allies. According to MI5, Garcia gave the Germans a lot of good intel, but it would always be delivered just a little too late for them to do anything with it. The Germans ultimately gave him the Iron Cross. He would also receive the most excellent order of the British Empire for his extraordinary contributions as a spy. 17. Woolly mammoths still roam the earth during the age of the pyramids. Our perception of history is often skewed. Such is the case with the timelines for the extinction of the woolly mammoths. Most of us would imagine they died out at the end of the last ice age, roughly 10,000 years ago. However, woolly mammoths still roam certain parts of Alaska and the plains of Wrangell Island, Russia as recently as 1650 BCE. That means they still roam the earth while the pyramids were being built. In fact, the Great Pyramid of Giza had been in place for more than 1,000 years before the last woolly mammoth died. 16. Children's cough medicine used to include heroin. In the fast-paced world of pharma, what's good for you today might be bad for you tomorrow. Like the time, the industry decided to create a new drug to cure the epidemic their other one created. It happened in the late 1880s, and heroin became advertised as the safe, non-addictive substitute for morphine. The new wonder drug, known as diamorphine, was invented in the 1870s by an English chemical researcher named C.R. Alder Wright. However, it wasn't commercialized until a scientist working for Bayer Pharmaceuticals came across the article in 1895. Bayer started marketing their heroin-laced aspirin to children in 1898. Some bottles even showed children joyfully reaching for the medicine, while mothers spoon-fed the heroin to their sick children. Yikes. Come on, kids, enjoy some heroin. It's the greatest new craze. Everyone's doing it. <laughs> That's more 1920s, but... 15. The richest man of all time lived in the 14th century. Elon Musk is the wealthiest man alive. With an estimated net worth of $231 billion, according to Forbes, he still doesn't make the cut for the wealthiest man of all time. It might come as a shock to you, but the wealthiest man of all time lived in the 14th century in West Africa. We're of course talking about Mansa Musa, who once traveled to Mecca with a caravan of 12,000 slaves and 60,000 men. According to economic historians, his wealth was so vast that it was impossible to put a number next to it. His kingdom stretched for 2,000 miles from the Atlantic to modern-day Nigeria and included modern-day Gambia, Senegal, Guinea and Ivory Coast, Guinea-Bissau, Mauritania, Mali, and Burkina Faso. In fact, during his rule, the Empire of Mali accounted for half the world's gold, and it all belonged to the king. 14. The world population was less than 1 billion people a mere 220 years ago. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. It's kind of why it's on this list. About 108 billion people have called this planet their home. That means that you and I, or the people that make up the world population today, make up around 6.5% of all the people ever born. The scariest fact when we look at the world population figures is that the world population remained well under a million for thousands of years. In fact, Homo sapiens faced extinction several times since we first appeared on the scene. However, our numbers have ballooned in the past 220 years as we jumped by 7.6 billion within that tiny time frame. It really makes you think. 13. 
we have a pub that's been operating since the Dark Ages. Would you like to have a drink in a pub that's been around since the Dark Ages? Well, we've got you covered. Get online and book your tickets. Destination? Ireland. Sean's Bar in Athlone, Ireland is currently the oldest pub in the world. The pub has a rich and well-documented history that dates back all the way to 900 CE, a record that's been thoroughly researched and confirmed by the Guinness Book of World Records. While the pub, or tavern as it would have been called in those days, has been around since the Dark Ages, it wasn't always called Sean's Bar, and had the beautiful name of Lucian's Inn. While the official search for the world's oldest pub remains ongoing, according to Guinness, nothing older has been discovered so far. 12. Dentures were made from the teeth of the dead. Dentures are gross enough as is, but did you know that they used to be made from actual teeth? Way back in the 19th century, teeth would be extracted from the mouths of dead soldiers. In fact, quite a few pairs were made from the teeth of soldiers who died during the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, where 50,000 young men died. These became known as Waterloo teeth. After a battle, scavengers would plunder the bodies for anything of value, including teeth, which dentists would buy. The dentists would boil them, cut off their roots, attach them to ivory plates, and sell them to the public. We have no idea whether the customers knew where the teeth came from, but I do have to ask, how could they not? Creepy indeed. 11. Saddam Hussein was given the key to the Motor City. While a distinct dislike earmarked the 90s when it came to Saddam Hussein in the US, it might surprise some of you to know that he was awarded the keys to the city of Detroit just a few short years earlier. Whether the short-lived love for the man came naturally or due to his generous financial aid to a particular church is open to debate, but the facts have a way of speaking for themselves. You see, in 1979, a message was sent to Saddam Hussein to congratulate him on his newly appointed presidency by Reverend Jacob Yasso of the Sacred Heart Chaldean Catholic Church. Hussein responded with a donation of $250,000. A year later, the Reverend traveled to Iraq and personally gave Hussein the keys to the city. I know, it sounds suspicious, right? But hold on, it doesn't end there. A few years later, another donation dropped to the tune of $200,000. Now, this is just my personal opinion, but it definitely seems as if there's a price tag attached to the keys of an American city. How come I don't get the keys? You know what? If you're the mayor of a city and you want to give me keys to the city, I will gladly accept. Just send them my way. I'll, I'm sure some mayor from some city watches this. Yeah, let me just email me, mike at list25.com. Let's go. I'll, uh, I'll gladly accept the keys to your city. I don't even know what they do anymore. Did they ever do anything? 10. We used to put animals on trial. And we didn't discriminate. Whether it was murder or theft, pigs, horses, cows, dogs, and even insects all went on trial. And we actually routinely put them to death. These animals actually had actual representation, and they would often be some of the best lawyers of the day. One interesting account is of Barthélemy de Chasseneuse, a prominent figure in the French legal world of the day who got his start defending rats. Yes, rats. While defending his clients in 1522, none of whom showed up to court, Chasseneuse argued that they couldn't come to court due to all the cats in town. Huh. Even though the case fell apart, who would have thought, Chasseneuse moved on to an illustrious career representing human clients. 9. The Fear of Being Buried Alive If you've ever watched The Nun, you'd be familiar with the bells and safety coffins people of the 18th and 19th centuries used to ensure nobody would be buried alive. But bells and safety coffins were only one of the methods employed. Most of the efforts centered around the methods used before someone was placed in their coffin and buried. It included the removal of a person's heart, pricking them with needles, doing respiratory tests, and even cutting their veins. In fact, the writer Hans Christian Andersen had such a big fear of being buried alive that he always placed a card in his hotel room that said, I'm not really dead. But before he died, he asked his friends to open his veins before his burial. 8. The most successful pirate in history was a woman. I think this calls for better representation in children's coloring books. Ching Shi, born in 1775, was the commander of the Red Flag Fleet a coalition of pirate ships that terrorized the China Sea. Although little is known about her birth, we do know that she was kidnapped by pirates at some point in her life and ended up marrying Zheng Yi, the visionary who created the coalition. After his death in 1807, Qing took command of the fleet with over 300 junks and 40,000 men. 
The fleet size was such that everyone, including the British Admiralty, feared it, especially once they discovered that Qing had the nasty habit of nailing her enemies to their decks. All in all, China lost 63 naval ships to the pirate fleet, which forced the government to offer them amnesty. 7. The Real Avengers You might know them as the superheroes of the box office. However, the Avengers, also known as the Nokmim, were a group of Jewish assassins who made it their life's mission to hunt down Nazi war criminals after World War II. You see, after World War II ended, many Jews were left without a public platform to express their anger at the horrendous injustice they had been forced to endure. Some found this outlet by dedicating their lives to the assassination of Nazis. It's difficult to estimate just how many people the Avengers killed, since they made many of the deaths appear to be accidents, but we do know they once poisoned 2,283 German prisoners of war. Although nobody knows how long the Avengers operated, it's widely accepted that it was well into the 1950s. 6. Cleopatra was not an Egyptian For some reason, the next item on our list is very controversial. Be that as it may, it is a fact. Cleopatra is best known for shaping Roman politics at a critical time in our history. But did you know that Cleopatra was an Egyptian? While she was born in Egypt, Cleopatra's lineage lies in Macedonian Greece via Ptolemy I Soter, one of Alexander the Great's most important generals. Following Alexander's death in 323 BCE, Ptolemy established a line of Greek-speaking monarchs that remained in power for almost 300 years. Yet, despite not being a true Egyptian, Cleopatra welcomed many of her country's time-honored traditions and was the first person of the Ptolemaic lineage to learn Egyptian. 5. Ketchup started out as medicine Whether you love it or hate it, ketchup is one of the staples in most households. But did you know it started out as a stomach remedy? I'm not kidding. In 1834, Dr. John Cook Bennett advertised tomato ketchup as a treatment that cured amongst other things, jaundice, diarrhea, indigestion, and rheumatism. That sounds like a worse version of the Pepto-Bismol commercial. He even converted the condiment into tablets to make it seem more legit. We're not sure if he cured anybody, and his run was over by the 1950s when other entrepreneurs got onto the bandwagon. Ketchup finally found its place as a highly sought-after condiment in the world in the late 1800s. Who's your go-to ketchup? Let us know in the comments below. Heinz, Hunts, any others? Whataburger has a good one. 4. The President in the WWE Hall of Fame Everyone knows that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves, but did you know that he's a member of the WWE Hall of Fame? As a young adult, the 6'4 man was an accomplished wrestler and only lost one match in 300. According to Carl Sandburg's biography, after defeating an opponent, he once confronted a crowd of spectators saying, I am the big buck of this lick. If any of you want to try it, come on and wet your horns. Nobody got up. Abraham Lincoln is honored in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame's Presidential Grapplers exhibit, alongside eight other U.S. presidents who wrestled, including John Adams, George Washington, and Theodore Roosevelt. And now you know something that not many others know. 3. The Vikings Discovered North America While this item on today's list is just as contentious as the one discussing Cleopatra's lineage, it's important to note that the Vikings' early voyages to North America were well documented and acknowledged as fact by most historians. Around 1000 CE, the Viking adventurer Leif Erikson, son of Eric the Red, sailed to the country he named Vinland, located in what is today the province of Newfoundland in Canada. Erikson and his men only stayed a few years before returning to Greenland. This much everyone knew. However, there wasn't any evidence of Erikson's trips to America until 1960, that year, Helga Ingstad, a Norwegian explorer, and his wife, archaeologist Anne Stein Ingstad, discovered a centuries-old Norse settlement. The Ingstads spent the following seven years unearthing the foundations of eight different buildings, in the process providing the proof the world has been waiting for. In 1969, Congress declared October 9th Leif Erikson Day. 2. Iceland has the oldest parliament in the world When the Vikings settled in Iceland around 850 CE, it was too remote for any authority or king to rule it. What they created ended up being a medieval Viking republic governed by the Althingi since 930 CE, making it the oldest continuously functioning parliament we have in the world. By the time the Althingi was being created, Iceland's population had grown to the point where most people wanted to develop their own laws. 
From then on, the Altini gathered in Thingvet Lir for two weeks annually every June, since that was the most optimal time for traveling. The land was divided into 36 chieftaincies, each sending a chieftain and two advisors to the annual Althingi. The law speaker was practically Iceland's living constitution, and he and his advisors were obligated to know and understand every single one of Iceland's laws by heart. 1. The Good Hitler William Patrick Stewart Houston was a popular and esteemed member of the United States Armed Forces. In World War II, he served as a pharmacist's mate for three years and was even awarded the Purple Heart. He relocated to New York after the war, married the love of his life Phyllis, had four children, and established his own lucrative medical company. Few people in Stuart Houston's neighborhood were aware of the fact that their friendly neighbor Bill was a Hitler. Yes, William Patrick Stuart Houston started out as William Patrick Hitler. Hitler's two nephews, William and Heinz, took completely different paths in life. William was born in 1911 after his father relocated to Britain. Following Adolf Hitler's rise to the top, William was asked to return to Germany to work in a bank with the caveat that he had to give up his British citizenship. William, however, had other plans, and moved to the US, where he publicly criticized his uncle's regime. He ultimately joined the US Navy and rose to the rank of pharmacist's mate before his honorable discharge in 1947. So, what's a historical event you know of that happened but just doesn't sound real? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and check out our social medias, including my personal ones. Links in the description. And if you enjoyed this list, you will love 25 fake and misleading things that everybody needs to know about. And you know what? Speaking of history, why are you taking your time clicking this next video? Come on, hurry up, click it. It's right there. Let's go. You have other videos to watch. History, time is ticking.